I want to test the video. Okay, I will start in three or four minutes. Thanks. Just want to test the video. I hope you can see it well. Perfect. Okay. Okay, I will share my screen. Okay, colleagues, I will start. So my name is, uh, well, first, uh, good, uh, good afternoon, um, or good evening, maybe in Lebanon. My name is Javier Rojas, I'm a periodontist. Um, I have a fellowship in implantology in Johannes Gutenberg University in Germany. Um, and I will talk today about the new surgical procedures for root coverage. 
Um, I will talk today about uh, the new research that we have on tissue adhesives too, and about my experience in three years using these tissue adhesives like uh, periacryl from glue stitch. So let's start first with the rationalization to cover to uh, to cover recessions. And the main reason for that is to cover, of course, root surfaces, to improve the aesthetic, to prevent recessions, and to improve the biotype, and to facilitate the hygiene. This was published uh, by Kim and Neva in 2015. So, and what happened if we don't treat the recessions? Well, there is a research on that uh, published uh, by Chambron in 2016. This is a systematic review. And he shows that if you don't treat a recession, the recession will uh, be bigger in with, with time. And 78% of the recession will progress with the time. So the conclusion is that we need to treat a recession. Prato in 2018, this is, uh, was published last year, says that uh, shows that uh, the main reason for the recessions is the uh, uh, that we is because we use a lot of strain on toothbrushing, and the two most important risk factors are tobacco and less than two millimeters of attached gingiva. Here you can see the odds ratio after 20 years to have this to having these two important risk factors. And what has been changed in our techniques to cover the recessions? Well, if uh, you can see here uh, a, line, uh, a timeline, and if we talk about the 50s and 60s, uh, the percentage, the average of uh, root coverage was 67 with these techniques like double papilla flap, obliquus rotary flap, lateral repositioning flap, and others like the free gingival graft. In the 70s and 80s, we had other techniques, the papillar rotary flap, the connected tissue graft with this bilaminar blood supply from Langer, and we improve their root coverage to 84%. If we jump to the 90s and 2000, we have better surgical techniques like the tunnel technique, technique with uh, the CTG, the connected tissue graft, the se semilunar from Ternal, the bilateral pedicle flap, and others. And we jump to a root coverage of about 86%. And if we talk about our last years, uh, we can add other products like Amdogain, we can add microsurgery, pinhole technique, and a mix of these uh, surgical techniques like the coronal defense flap plus CTG and M to gain and others uh, published by Scullion. And now we can talk about the root coverage of 96%. That is really, really good. But what or which are the success variables in root coverage procedures? Well, Richardson published in 2015 about uh, many, many variables. And you can talk about patient level, site level, and operator level. And I will talk about just a little bit of, about these variables. When you treat a patient uh, that is a smoker, you will have less root coverage. If the patient doesn't have a good hygiene, you will have less coverage. And you can do the best surgery. Everything is perfect, but if the patient has a bad post-op care, uh, you will lose everything. You will lose your sutures, you will lose the connected tissue graft. So we need a, a, an extra material to cover and protect everything. If we talk about side level, there are many variables, as you can see here, like type of recession, gingival biotype, well, and others. And this is the main reason why, because uh, why we have recessions is uh, we 
abuse and use a lot of strain using uh, the toothbrush. And when we apply uh, a force uh, like that, we apply force into the buckle bone. And the buckle bone is very thin in 95% of the patients, less than one millimeter. So we stimulate uh, the osteocyte. The osteocyte transforms themselves into a cell that is an osteoclast. The osteoclast reabsorb the, the bone, the buckle bone, and with time we have a recession. And with time we have hypersensibility. And we need to cover that, as I showed previously on the slides. So which role plays the interdental papilla on root cover surgery? Well, a short and thick papilla is better for the blood supply. This was published by Salet in 2001. Which role plays the flap thickness on root coverage? Well, the thickness must be more than 0.8 millimeters for a better, more root coverage. Which role plays the flap tension on root coverage? Well, the flap tension must be zero. Zero for um, more coverage. If we have some tension, we can get less root coverage. And I will talk about the last level, that is the operator level. This is a level that we can manage because it depends on us. And I will talk about the instruments that we need to use for root coverage procedures today. And well, here you can see uh, very small tweezers, tunneling knives, um, uh, Lagrange. And the most important part of this is, this, is the blade. You need a micro blades like the one you are seeing here. You need these tweezers uh, with uh, this is the, the bakey tweezer with these teeth, so you can uh, grab the seizure very well. You need rounded uh, instruments like the one you're seeing here. And this is the different to use a 15 blade or a 15C blade, or a 69 blade, or a sclerotome, that are the instruments that I use for to do these kind of surgeries. And the difference, uh, well, here you can see the tunneling knife. We have different uh, instruments here for different brands, uh, TKN1, TKN2, Orban, Papa Ella, Allen, and here you can see the difference uh, using a 15 blade. So here you cut the papilla. That is a huge mistake in this kind of surgeries. So we need to avoid this kind of plates. Here's the 15 C blade. It's better for what we want to do, but still is too big. Here you can see a micro blade that is perfect for what we want to do. You can move the tip of the blade, so it's perfect to for these small areas like the papilla. So we we need these kind of instruments to make a less invasive surgery and an easier surgery. You need this retractors, of course, to see it well and to have a lot of illumination, a lot of light in the surgical area. Some dentists use uh, magnification glasses, a good illumination. And more and more with the time we are investing on new materials, well, like the PRF uh, machine, new uh, and better sutures, uh, this uh, Mdogain and Pref gel with EDTA and since a couple of years, I integrated into my office uh, periacryl, that is uh, cyanocrylate um, made in Canada by the company Glustich. Uh, here you can see come in a bottle with 5 ml, um, 50 pipettes, and an administration tray. 
Uh, this is a mix between two cyanocrylates, one is uh, octyl and butyl. So it's kind of flexible to apply it in, into oral surgeries. And it's a high viscosity product. It's six times more um, viscous than the, the liquid or the, the material that we use for the skin. Um, and you can protect uh, root coverage procedures. You can use it on uh, gingivectomies, uh, over membranes. And I will talk more about this in my next slides. slides. So uh, we have a lot of techniques uh, for root coverage. Here you can see the Sukeli technique, the Bruno technique, uh, the Aroca with these uh, suspended uh, sutures. Another one from Tsukeli and the free gingival graft. And these techniques are good, but um, to finish a surgery takes a lot of time. So we are trying to um, make it easier and shorter uh, for you. So which uh, technique is the best? The evidence is uh, heterogeneous and there is no standard treatment, but we have good results in terms of attaching GVR and root coverage with connective kind of tissue grafts and coronal advanced flaps. Uh, we can have a 97% of average coverage that it's really good and an 88% of full coverage that is good. But the problem is the time that we need to spend to have a surgery with these with these results. The normal time that you need is like two, three hours for two, three recessions. Uh, and the stability of these root coverage procedures, it's really good. Here you can see um, long-term evaluation about these uh, outcomes uh, of root coverage made by Prado in 2018. And here you can see in class one and two of Miller, uh, the stability of the root coverage, it's really good. Uh, even in class three. So, and which are the different techniques that we have for the palate too? Well, we are, um, using PRF in the donor side because we need to decrease the pain level and allows allows us to have a better bleeding control. So, and what kind of material do we need for a root coverage procedure? The gold standard today is to use the connected tissue graft from the palate in this, take it in this safe zone that you can see here. And here we have a lot of uh, techniques. This is uh, one of the techniques. So you can do an incision and take the connected tissue graft from the deep uh, portion of the palate, uh, but you can have a lot of bleeding with this technique. The other technique is to take a free gingival graft and take the epithelium out. And I think it's a better technique. Here you can see the problem when you take a uh, connective kind of tissue graft from uh, the deep uh, area of the palate. It's irregular. You, It's a lot of blood there. And this is the difference between to grab and take a uh, a free gingival graft. You can manage the thickness of that graft better. Here you can cut the epithelium and have a nice piece of connective tissue. How much you need to cut from uh, the epithelium? No more than 0 0.3 millimeters. That's enough. And it's really stable in the palate. So it's, all, it's always 0 0.3 millimeters. And how you can close the donor site? Well, 
We have a lot of techniques. One of them is to use the cross suitors. Uh, it's a suspended suitors. Uh, the other technique is uh, the one uh, strictly in the palate. But we have problems with this because when the patients go up, uh, you can have a bleeding uh, after the surgery. You can apply PRF with this technique, uh, suture technique. But the PRF, when it's in contact with the uh, oral environment, you will lose really quick. So we now we are applying uh, sutures, and we can combine this with uh, periacryl to seal the incision to uh, get hemostasis and to protect the incision. And as you can see here, 10 days post-operation, you can see very, uh, very well wound healing. Now with the time, uh, we are using only periacryl, as you can see here, to seal the incision. It takes 10 seconds and will stay there. Periacryl will stay, will stay there seven to 10 days. It's a predictable technique that you can use here you can see the hemostasis. Uh, and this is another way to manage when we take a frigidable graft. Imagine that this piece of fat from the peak is PRF. You can apply the PRF directly into the wound area. This will manage uh, the hemostasis. You can have that benefit and will boost the wound healing too. And do you remember the epithelium that uh, we took uh, from the frigidable graft? Well, don't discard it. Uh, we can reuse it to protect our PRF membrane. You can apply it over it. And then we need to compress that and apply periacryl to protect everything and to maintain stable for seven to 10 days. So this is uh, the technique that I want to show. This is the, the first one is the connected tissue graft. The second one is the epithelium. The third one is the PRF. So, and here's the serum from the PRF. Here's where we, took a frigidable graft, we can apply or epinephrine for our syringe, we can apply the serum to stop the bleeding for a couple of seconds, then we can put over the PRF and then the uh, epithelium. And as you can see here, stop uh, the bleeding and you can see just a small wound area cover everything, it's very stable. And now we can apply periacryl to stabilize everything, to protect the wound. And here you can see after seven days, how fast heal or palate. And of course, if we use PRF, we can decrease the pale level. Here's a video where we are applying periacryl directly into the wound. That's, that's another technique. It would stop the bleeding. You can apply directly with the pipette and you can polymerize the product with uh, directly with the syringe, with uh, saline solution or with these uh, tips embed it in, in saline solution. Or you can grab some um, saliva from the patient with a, oh, oh, here, you can use a, a gauze too, embed it in, in saline solution. Or you can, uh, what I use is to embed my, my finger uh, and use saliva to scratch the, the last layer of periacryl and to have a very smooth layer. So you need for that two, three layers, it's enough and will stay there for seven to 10 days. 
So which are the advantages of the tissue adhesives? First, in the receptor and the um, recipient side, we can decrease the, um, the pain level if we combine in the donor side with PRF and a periacle, you can decrease the pain level too. Uh, you can protect, of course, the surgery and will stabilize everything. Uh, in the post-op care, uh, of course, we have some problems when we use techniques that we invest a lot of time on that. On that. Here you can see my patients when I started in this field, uh, look at the hematomas, the necrosis, I lose uh, stitches, I lose sutures. I had a lot of problems. It's a learning curve. Here you can see the hematomas. So bleeding here in the canine, I was losing the kinetic tissue graft because I can't seal with sutures the, the sulcus. So these are things that uh, I wanted to improve. Here you can see the wound healing. It was uh, a mess. Here you can see a small perforation, but I had a necrosis. So I think this was seven, eight years ago. So I wanted to improve that for my patients. With the time, I had no problem, but uh, at the beginning, the first week was uh, the patient had a lot of pain. So. What I do today is to give to our patients uh, a small bag with everything on it, the uh, ibuprofen, 400 or 600 milligrams, the chlorexidine, an ice pack, a leather with all the instructions uh, for the post-op care, a surgical toothbrush, everything. So at the end, the conclusion is we need more efficient protocols. And I will talk uh, about this. So if we analyze the, um, the root coverage procedure, we can divide it in incisions, dissection, and the suture, suturing. And if we change the sutures, the sutures to tissue adhesives, if we use that, we can save 70% of the surgical time. And if you save that time, you will have a less invasive uh surgery and and you the patient has the benefit to have less pain and for that uh i will talk about this uh incredible material called periacryl uh in high viscosity and that i think is the best material and the best viscosity for us So this is a, a free gingival graft uh, with Sukeli technique. It's very superficial. Uh, you, you need very superficial incisions. And when you apply the product, you can see the hemostat hemostatic uh, properties, the adhesive properties. You need two, three layers for that. You have to apply it uh, you uh, you need some drops and then uh, you can use your finger or the same pipette to um, spread the material and will stay there for seven to ten days. And here you can apply it over the free gingival graft. If you apply it over the, the teeth, you can have a better adhesive uh, property And after ah, uh, and this material is antibacterial per se. So the material, the periacle doesn't include uh, any antibiotics or other products. It's ninety nine percent a purified cyanocrylate, and it's so it's antibacterial uh, by itself. And after seven to ten days, it falls by itself. You don't need to remove it. If you see that this material, it's still um, glued to the, to the teeth, for example, you can grab uh, an instrument 
and pull it out. It's really easy. As you can see here, the whole uh, surgical side area, it's really clean. So we start a couple of years ago, a pilot study. Uh, we, we did root coverage procedures in patients with recessions from one to three millimeters that are the most prevalent uh, recessions. 77% of our patient has, uh, have uh, um, recessions from one to three millimeters. We leave exposed the connected tissue graft, no more than these three millimeters. Uh, this is a research, uh, an article from Han, and he, he shows us that we can have, if we leave exposed these three millimeters of connected tissue graft, uh, combining with, uh, combined with uh, the tunnel technique, uh, we can have a 94% of root coverage, and there is uh, no difference between to a coronal advanced flap and 93% of complete root coverage. And the, the benefit of uh, maintaining this expose is that we can have 1.5 millimeters more uh, attached gingiva. And this was a difference between a coronal advanced flap. Here's a meta-analysis from Dutch from last year. And he shows us that uh, this is a systematic review. Uh, this show that it shows that uh, in favor of exposed graft, we can gain more keratinized tissue with. This is the same article showing that uh, about complete root coverage, we don't have a difference between using a coronal advance flap or a tunnel technique with the exposed gingival graft in recessions from three millimeters. So this is what we're doing now. Uh, you need to clean the surface. You need to use a saline solution. You need a very thin scalpel. Here I'm using the 69 blade. I'm using a partial thickness flap to have this uh, bilaminar blood supply. Here I'm using a tunneling knife, TKN1. Then I go to the palate, I use Sukele technique, I use a new blade, a normal blade can be 15C or 15 blade, doesn't matter. Take the graft very superficial. Then grab it with a tweezer, cut in the middle, cut the epithelium from one side, then the other side. then you will have a very thin layer of connected tissue graft. 0 0.8 millimeters, it's perfect, it will be very, uh, you can have a lot of static with this kind of grafts. Then take out the periacal high viscosity, take a pipette, use a PRF membrane, then to, you can take the epithelium, put it over, compress, and then apply it periacal, in two, three layers, use a saline solution to for the polymerization of uh, periacryl. You need to extend the product in the palate, then grab your connected tissue graph, put the material under recession, be very precise with that, uh, I use uh, a curette for that. And then just apply the material in the interdental spaces, in the papilla, in the, in the tooth, and spread uh, periacle one teeth to the sides. And then pull, uh, you can use saline solution for the polymerization, apply two, three layers, it's enough with that. And you can have the benefit um, to have to have a very well and stabilized flap and connected tissue. You don't need to perforate your flap. 
So here you can have the better blood supply that we have today in a surgery. And the best part is that we can reduce the surgical time from one and a half hour in that kind of surgeries to 20 minutes. So it's less than a, than a composite. So here is a case. This was our first case. We took uh, the gingival, uh, the gonococcal tissue graft, we put it inside, we applied periacryl, and after um, seven days, uh, we had uh, the result. This is the pellet. So we sealed the incision and we had the wound healing was very good. This is the wound healing after uh, 14 days. You can see the re epitalization over the connected tissue graft. And after two months, you can see a full coverage. Um, it took me 20 minutes. Really easy, no complication, no pain at all. Here you can see another surgery. This uh, this is a class uh, one uh, of Miller. This are two recessions, uh, three and uh, two millimeters. I use the same technique. Uh, I use tunnel technique. I leave exposed to connective tissue graft and I apply periacryl. And as you can see here, this is after seven days. This is after fourteen days. And this is after two months. So the the static is very good. The, the coverage is really predictable. And it took me 23 minutes, less than a composite. Uh, here you can see another case, the same scenario, multiple recessions. So I use the same technique to tell you. Uh, I apply periacryl to three layers. You can see how this material uh, uh, do have hemostasis. It's really quick. The material sets really fast when I use a uh, saline solution. Here, I you can see how I seal the incision now. It's really easy. It takes me 10 seconds. Here's the wind healing after seven days, after two months, and after three years. And you can see no difference in the, on the static. Uh, we have a pink score really high. Uh, it's a full coverage, and it took me 21 minutes to do it. So these are other um, applications of periacryl. Here you can see a problem uh, in on these uh, implants. Uh, I removed the the provisionalization crown, the provisional crown. I took a rotary flap from the pellet. I put and the buckle part and over because uh, over the the implant to have more volume vertically, I mean. And here you can see how I do this rotation. And after I secure with suitors, I combine suit I I you can combine suitors with periacryl to in this case to cover the exposed uh, connective tissue graft. This allows me to protect the connective tissue graft against uh, bacteria, against food, against the contact with other uh, elements from, from the oral mouth. And this allows me to get more uh, vertical volume. In the palate, you can see all the incisions that, uh, that I did. So he, here, you can see how I apply it. Here I'm using a micro pipette. But you can use the normal pipettes, it's the same. Sometimes when you 
touch uh, with the tip of the pipette the blood, uh, the blood sticks on the tip and blocks and block the, the pipette. So, but you can cut cut the, the tip and uh, apply it again. So this is the results. Uh, I got a lot of volume vertically, and after that, I put uh, provisionalization, and I had this healing. This this is uh, this is uh, the wound healing after seven days, and with the time, I will be able to manage the papillas, uh, the senate. So in summary, the surgical time can be less using tissue adhesives. In my case, in my hands, uh, I spend 20 minutes on one or two recessions now. And it's really easy to use. We can treat eight from 10 cases with this technique. Uh, why? It's because 77% of the cases that we have in the private clinic, in the private practice, are, are uh, recessions from one to three millimeters. That's why. The rest, in the rest of the cases, like four, five, six, or more uh, length of uh, the recessions, we can use coronal advanced flap and the other techniques that we know. We can decrease using uh, tissue adhesives uh, the pay level of patients from four to six to one to three. That is a pain that does interfere with your regular activities. But we still are using the same um, indications after a surgery like this. So uh, you, need to, um, you need to drink a lot of water. Uh, some dentists use antibiotics, I, I don't. Uh, Painkillers, of course, uh, ibuprofen, 600 milligrams, one per eight hours for three three days. This normal. Ice pack, um, well, the slide, if you remember the slide uh, from post of care, I do the same thing all the time. And I want to thank my professor, Adrian Kashai from Johannes Gutenberg, Sonia Lessi from, um, from Vancouver, and these were people that helped me to develop my skills. And I want to thank you for your attention. And I hope you like it and try it. Try it and I will be able to answer your questions if you have. So. Uh, I will start to answer some questions. Um, let me see. Okay. You don't have to suture the graft at the recipient site before applying periacryl. Uh, yes, you don't need to suture um, the surgical area from the pellet. Uh, you can apply it well, it depends on, on the technique that you are using. I like free gingival graft with Sukali technique, so that it's very superficial cut. So I use only periacryl uh, directly or with PRF and this technique like sandwich technique, uh, and I apply PRF, the epithelium, and then periacryl. So you don't need to suture. Uh, if you like to apply directly, works fine too. Um, if you like one incision, two or three incision, like the trap door technique, you can apply it and seal uh, the incisions. Just one recommendation, you need to uh, compress first with a gauze uh, to have a hemostasis and then apply the material. Is it more stable than stitches? Um, it depends. Uh, you can uh, you can use periacryl alone if your flap doesn't have tension. If you have some tension, I recommend to use the combination stitches with and seal the incision with periacryl, uh, and you will not lose any knot. 
uh, but it's really, really predictable. Is there any harm in putting the periacal inside the prepared tunnel? Uh, you will have, if you do that, you will have a um, foreign reaction because this material hydrolyzes itself with time. And it's like uh, like a xenograph. You will have the uh, some pieces in the tissue, and the tissue will try to to expulse that from from the body. But you will you will not have any infection or something. But we don't recommend. This is a dressing material. Have you ever tried to use Peracle to stabilize the free digital graft on the recipient side before suturing it? Yes. Uh, there is a publication from Gummus that I recommend for 2014. And he used only cyanocrylates to stabilize free digital grafts and works well. Uh, uh, I know that uh, a dentist in Vancouver did that since 20 years. And I'm using that the same technique. I'm just applying periacral uh, over the frigidal graph and works fine. I don't use sutures here in the upper jaw, but in the jaw, I use uh, just one or two sutures to stabilize um, the vestibulum. Um, but the rest, the frigid graph, I just applied uh, periacrylate. I use save. You can save a lot of time. It's really stable and sticks really good on tissues. Is there other questions? Do you try to put periacrylate on a collagen fleece at the donor site? Uh, yes. Uh, I do. Um, there is a research uh, published last year from Tavelli, and he used a collagen uh, fleece. Uh, I can't remember the brand, but it doesn't matter. You can use any any collagen fleece or collagen sponges, and he applied the sponge and periacral over. And he showed us that you can reduce uh, the pain level from 1.5 or 2 in the vast scale to 0 0.5 in the first days. And after three or four days, you don't have any pain. Uh, so this is a great technique. It's really cheap uh, because the collagen fleece is, is uh, it's not expensive. And uh, you can have a very stable uh uh, uh, collagen sponge there um, and the clot it's very stable too do you recommend using it in combination with socket grafting using DPDFE cytoplasm membrane uh, yes uh, there is a re uh, research uh, from Dr. Nevins published last year too and you can apply it a graft. It doesn't matter which kind of graft, allergen or xenograft or whatever. You can apply it uh, a collagen membrane or a PTFE membrane. Uh, and you can cover um, the membrane with periacryl. And you can you can cover that and to protect from the movements uh, and the um, and the contact with food and to stabilize everything at the end. And he took after that, after the this surgery, he took, um, uh, he did a histological analysis and it doesn't interfere with any wound healing process, bone healing process, nothing because stay as a dressing material in the top of, of the, of the uh, surgical area. So this is another uh, research on article, article that I recommend you to, to read. Is there any other questions?
Let me see my phone if we have something here. I think there is no more questions. So you can apply it over collagen membranes, PTFE membranes, for gingivectomies, for root covert procedures. You can apply it over stitches. Uh, when you have flaps with no tension, you can apply it alone. When you have tension, apply it with, uh, with sutures. You can apply it for free gingival grafts or when you take any graft from the pellet. And you can protect at the end any surgery. Okay, colleagues, um, thank you for your attention. I will be a, uh, available to answer other questions in the future on the on the Facebook on Facebook. So thank you, um, and I hope you you liked uh, the presentation. Bye.